Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study, and we begin a, a new week of study. Um, and there's lots to look at, lots that we're learning. A couple of things we're going to address from that happened yesterday. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have to open your word. And thank you for the way that you comfort us and you give us faith and confidence in what you are doing. We know, Lord, that your purposes will be worked out. And as long as we are faithful, that we can be a part of those purposes. Uh, we know that you are an amazing God and, and you care about each one of us. We pray for one another. We pray for those that have received light. And we ask, Lord, that they can respond to it. May your Holy Spirit guide us in this study as we look at uh, a present situation in the light of Daniel chapter 11. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so so yesterday, just a note here. Um, so Elder Jeff showed up at, uh, was it the American group or the Canadian group that had a study yesterday? Is that the American group? Yeah. So he showed up at the study uh, 1,260 days after July 18, 2020, um, uh, I guess in the question and answer, because I didn't watch it, but I guess he, he said basically he doesn't want anything to do with numbers. But uh, so that means he can't interpret that 1,260 days, but, um, you know, they're there. And so this is just a chart of the 777 structure in the 1260 days from July 18, 2020. You know, I really believe that people should decide for themselves what is truth. They need to study things. We're not following men. We're following God's word. And I encourage people to look into and study as many things as they can that relate to these truths. But um, I would think the symbol of the 1260 must be significant. I don't think I would dismiss it as just a bunch of numbers or anything like that. So um, the other thing that I want to look at, and so this I had noticed after the study on Thursday, I was, while well, I wait for the file to convert, I uh, usually look at some of the things that we're, we've been looking at. And I looked at the lexical sum for Daniel 11, verse 16. Now, of course, Daniel 11, verse 16, it's, a, he shall do according to his own will. Right. So we know that that is said of Persia, that's said of Greece, that's said of Rome, and that's said of, uh, you know, pagan Rome and papal Rome. Right. So you're going to get that in verse 36 of Daniel 11, too. Right? So you, so Daniel 11, 36 as well. And, and that's going to be the papacy. But we know here that this is pagan Rome. And we know that, um, pagan Rome typifies papal Rome. In our lines. So when we're applying this to the end of Greece, this is referring to the time of the Sunday law, right? He shall stand in the glorious land. But here, when, when we look at the Sunday law, the Sunday law is still future, right? When we're, we're taking that line of Persia and, and we come to the Sunday law, this is a date that we can't set. We don't know the date of the Sunday law. Right. But that's a date that's still in the future. We can know it's in the future because it hasn't happened yet uh, but it's on a line and so we know that it's something that's approaching now we're also using uh, verse 14, 15 and 16 to refer to the beginning of our lines relating to first Rome exalting itself to establish the vision in verse 14 which we spent so much time on and when Rome does that we know that that's that history dealing with Reagan and Pope John Paul II, right, that leads to the fall of the Soviet Union, which is going to be uh, the Battle of Paneum, with 1798 being the Battle of Raffia on this bigger line. And um, so when we get to, when we're, we're addressing Rome here, and it says, but he that cometh against him. No, so who is he coming against? And who is the he that cometh against him? So we, we're going to say, the he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. That's pretty obviously that that's Rome here historically. And in our line, that's going to be the papacy. And who's the him that he cometh against? Isn't that the king of the south? Yes, the king of the south, right? 
So somewhere, he that cometh against the king of the south, so that's the papacy, 1989, he shall do according to his own will. None shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land. Now, standing in the glorious land, that's the Sunday law, right? I would agree. Yeah, that, that's Revelation 18, which, which by his hand shall be consumed, right? So, so this is the persecution that's going to happen against God's people under the Sunday law. So that's going to mark September 11th, right? If we're going to put it in our line, this verse 14, 15, and 16, uh, it's going to bring us to this period before November 9th, 1989. It's going to give us November 9th, 1989. And then it's going to give us September 11th, when he stands in the glorious land, correct? All right. So I was looking at this verse, counting up the Hebrew numbers. So it's 47,000. 903, that is all of the Hebrew numbers in that verse. If you added up the, the 935, the 413, plus 3, the 6213, plus 75, it'll add up to 37,903. And so when I did this, the way that I thought about it was, well, what date would I want to start at? Because I, I could know it's like a period of 100 and what, 30 years or something like that. 47,903, it says there, right? So then I thought, well, what about the date of papal infallibility? So that's July 18th, 1870. So that's going to be Vatican I. They're going to have this vote. Uh, on July 18th, 1870, there's going to be 530 votes in favor and only two against, uh, defining as dogma the infallibility of the Pope when speaking ex cathedra. So the number of days from that date, I counted them, and it came to September 11th, 2001. That's an inclusive count. Is is this significant? I would think that it would have to be significant. Mm-hmm. It'd have to, it'd have to be significant. Be, because they, these these two dates go together, and this verse brings us to September 11th. Right. So so we can interpret as as a present truth application when we take the history of pagan Rome in Daniel chapter 11, that it's going to bring us to this history from 1989 to September 11th, 2001. Right. It's going to give this this verse is going to give us this history and and it's going to tie that to July 18, 1870, which is a. A double of July 18, right? The 187 and the July 18 date tied together in that symbolic date. So, so when we look at these numbers, cause just, uh, hi, Angela. So, you know, Jeff was at the meeting. We were talking about this before you showed up, but Jeff was at the meeting, uh, of the American group yesterday because they're studying, uh, I guess it's Steve Welk was presenting on Jeff's articles. And and Jeff showed up and was part of the discussion and, and did a question and answer session afterwards. But it happens to be 1260 days from July 18, 2020, that Jeff decides uh, to show up. So I think it's pretty significant. So we can see, you know, we wouldn't have predicted that. I mean, I I, I did count 1260 days from July 18, 2020 back a long time ago, probably before July 18, 2020, you know, I looked at all different kinds of numbers, but I wouldn't have expected that Jeff is just going to show up at our studies 1260 days after July 18, 2020. We know that the school of the prophets was sold 187 days after July 18, 2020. So we have another symbol attached to July 18, 2020. But, you know, what we can say is that these numbers are significant, and, and remember that none of these numbers are, they're, they're not our primary uh, reason for our conclusions. Every time we have a number, we have already established things from God's word using, you know, using Miller's rules, understanding what these verses are about, how we've even made application to our time. But we have looked at these, these uh, numbers as symbols and clues and they do help in interpreting uh, these verses, when, especially when we make our, shouldn't say especially, 
when we make our present truth application, we're not really using these numbers for the primary application of these verses, right? We, we, we've stood on basically what has been given in the past. Because we know we have to have a correct understanding of these verses in order to interpret them in our time, right? So that we, we're repeating history. If we don't understand the fulfillment of the prophecy, we, we make some false application, then it's going to misguide us when we try to make a present application. You know, I probably should make these a little bit bigger. I'm just going to make this this text here bigger. Okay, so I've got a, I have a question. Yeah. Um, on this, on July 18th, 1870, is there anything that we can take from that being the 18th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar? I mean, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm listening and I'm hearing some things, but I mean, when I'm looking at this on that date on the biblical calendar, we're right in the middle of the month of Tammuz. So you're saying July 18th, 1870? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would. I, I don't have 418 as a symbol. Or 184. Or 184 as a symbol. Or 814. No, I, I don't have any of those as symbols. Okay. I would. The fact we have two witnesses, July 18 and 1870, you know, like normally I like two witnesses. 814 is the central pillar. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Daniel 8.14. Oh, okay. I never thought of that. <laughs> okay. So if you want to put 8.14 there, I guess we could do that with July 18, 1870. You know, the problem is if you have so many numbers as symbols, they start not meaning anything. But if if they apply and, and, and we can see how under 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And that comes to July 18th. It shows the parallel between October 22nd and July 18th. I mean, I, I'm understanding. Okay. Daniel 8, 14, four times 18 equals 72 or half of 144. I, yeah. I'm looking at this thing where, I mean, the history of what would have been done in Rome means that there were 535 total cardinals, right? Well, there there was actually more. Uh, a large group of them left. So they had done a preliminary vote on the 13th. And there was, I can't remember how many, you know, 50, 60, 70, you know, it's like, it wasn't a round number. Uh, they just decided to leave. They didn't want to vote. So, you know, there would have been more voting against if all the cardinals were there. But, yeah, here you have 533 uh, cardinals voting in favor and two voting against. So there were a total of 535 cardinals at that point voting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know if that number is significant. I didn't put the number there because I thought it was significant. I just... I did, this is actually just from Wikipedia, so right. I just I just put the quote there. I didn't give it a reference, but yeah. So July 18 of 1870 uh, obviously has that double symbol, and then you got it fits the the fourth day, 18th day of the fourth month, so that can give you uh, you know 814, you know, in reverse. You know, that's 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 fine. You know, the thing is, Jeff is saying that numbers don't don't matter right they're they're not important uh, they're going to mislead people he doesn't want to have anything to do with numbers well numbers can mislead people right people can make um you know they can use them for time setting they can use them uh they can misinterpret the symbols that are there so, you know so even if we go back to you know to this here somebody can say well see since July 18th, we had this papal oppression, you know, which is Theodore. And now, you know, Theodore has been taken captive on December 30th when, you know, Jeff stands up and shows that this was all error. Right. I mean, a person could interpret it that way. You understand what I'm saying? You're right. So numbers in and of themselves 
can't really tell us anything. The numbers, the numbers are there, but how we understand these things has to be based upon the plain understanding of God's word and, and how God has led us in the past. Right. And, and so many things that I've seen people do, not, not just in this movement, but other, other, you know, within Adventism is they end up rejecting the foundation that was laid based upon some theory or idea that becomes the predominant thing. So they're, so one is they're going to have an idea that's unique or interesting or whatever they want to call it, but it doesn't establish the past. It actually contradicts what was done in the past. And so, you know, we take the position that God has been leading all the way through, you know, from the first gospel promise there in the garden of Eden, you know, made to Adam and Eve by God. And, and all of the events that have happened throughout history, that God has been leading in that and that he has given a witness as the wonderful member and nothing that has come after it doesn't, it doesn't change what's in the past. It just simply adds to it, right? It adds detail and it always is built upon that foundation. And that foundation is the cross, the gospel promise, right? And that's why when we look at something like the 70 weeks, I mean, the reason why we accept the 70 weeks is not just because it's a bunch of numbers and they happen to fit together coincidentally. It's because it establishes the truth of that gospel promise given in Eden. You know, Christ crucified in the midst of the week, that chiasm of the 70th week has been witnessed to throughout the scriptures, throughout all of these different prophecies. You know, the Sabbath given as a sign, right? It's when you know, God says, I've given you the Sabbath as a sign between me and you that you may know that I'm the Lord that sanctifies you. It's not just about Sabbath keeping, though Sabbath keeping is important, you know, <laughs> but there is the symbol of what that that means prophetically. So he's given it as a sign throughout all of these prophecies, whether it's the weekly cycle or the seven year sabbatical cycle or the Jubilee cycle or the twenty five twenty. All of these are the Sabbath given as a sign. So I think it's it's extremely important that we understand that we can't abandon these numbers because these numbers have led God's people from the beginning. And and a denial of the symbolic use of numbers is really a repudiation. It's, It's a denial. It's a rejection of what God has taught us in the past. Hi, McDonald. Um, we're just looking at a chart here. So, uh, yesterday, uh, Jeff, uh, presented, uh, well, he didn't present. He joined in the American group study on his papers, his articles that he's been writing. And, uh, he rejected the use of numbers. And, but he happened to show up 1260 days from July 18, 2020. So uh, we thought it was noteworthy to recognize that. So we were looking at that chart and also this chart here dealing with uh, the date of papal infallibility, July 18, 1870. We take the lexical numbers out of all the Hebrew numbers in Daniel 1116, which addresses the Sunday law, September 11th, 2001. It's the number of days inclusive from July 18, 1870 to September 11, 2001. So, so we believe that, that these numbers are not coincidence this this is christ and for us to reject the use of numbers is wrong it's just it's just wrong there's no 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 better word than the word wrong in this case so so when we look at these verses now so we we had okay so just angela makes a comment about the 735 days on that chart seven times uh is seven times 105, the 10th day of the fifth month symbol. Thanks, Angela, for that. Okay, so <clears throat> so we're going back now to, to look at these verses, and we had addressed um, all of these verses, and this application is what we would call the application of Rome in Daniel chapter 11 and applying it to our lives. So we, we look at, at those times, this is going to be, the Soviet-Afghan war, that there's many that shall uh, stand up against the king of the south, right? 
So this is going to be uh, Reagan and the Pope and the Solidarity Movement. All of these things are going to uh, stand up against the King of the South, which is the USSR in that history. And at that time, uh, the robbers of thy people in that history exalt themselves to establish the vision. So we know that the Pope uh, is exalting himself to establish the vision, right? So that's, so we have this word also um, here, which we just noted. It's, it's avav, which just means actually and, right? So it's not a, in addition to in the sense of, you know, that it's like, because we already have the Pope here and Reagan, right? And then we're saying, and also the robbers of the people. So this is just singling out Rome here. And so Rome is going to exalt itself to establish the vision. And that happens in that history prior to November 9th, right? So it's going to lead to November 9th. Um, and we know that Rome shall fall, but, or shall establish the vision, but they're going to fall later on, close of probation, the seven last plagues, all of those things. And then it says in verse 15, so the king of the north, that's the USA, shall come. So that's November 9th, 1989. Cast up a mount. We're going to, that we have there, uh, the siege or persecution. Now here in this case, I, I don't think we would put persecution there. Right, because this is November 9th, 1989. So, so cast up a mount. Um, so this is the idea of a siege. Uh, could we put economic and military pressure? Does that make sense? That's going to be, you know, the ships and what, what's, what's in Daniel 11 verse 40. Horsemen, ships, and, um, Chariots, right? Does that make sense? The people? That's possible. I think that's probably the best way to interpret that. It's the economic and military pressure. The ships, that's the economic pressure. And the military, Star Wars, and of course, all the other things that were happening at that time. So this economic and military pressure is going to be brought upon the Soviet Union. That's the siege. That's the casting up of a mount, right? Now, we also have, um, you know, it, it's interesting we have the number 555, five, five, right? Because um, obviously that number, is, it's a triple number. And the word mount itself, this is not the usual word for, for mount, like a mountain, har, right? This is, let's see, what did they say? I can't remember. It's, Solia, anyway, it just means like a mound. Now it comes from 5549, which means to mound up, especially a turnpike, figuratively to exalt. Uh, so it can mean cast up or exalt self or extol or make plain or raise up. So when we use this word mount and, and, and applying this to the fall of the Soviet Union to this siege, this, that, that's going to precede the, the fall of the Soviet Union. How then would we take that mount? What would be the best way? And, and also we have the word cast up. So it's so if we look at this word, it means to cast up. Even the word uh, mound means to cast up. So you they could have said and cast up a cast up, right? Now the thing is, it, it's a noun, right? Mound. But it comes from a, a verb. So you got the mound, like you can mound something, that's a verb. And you, the, the thing that you mound, the thing you make is the mound. That's the noun, right? So that's the only difference here. But then you have um, the number 8210, so 8,210, which is, is translated as cast up, right? So you can cast up a cast up, but they're, but they're not the same words. So that word, uh, the cast up word, um, it means it's shafak and it means to pour or pour out or spill. So they're going to pour out a mound or a mount, right? So they're going to pour out this pile. And, and so what, what is that symbol? What is that 
that telling us this casting up of this mount? Are we looking at this in a, in this symbolic, are we looking at this symbolically, but in a way where it affects overall the economic situation? I mean, right now, what we're seeing going on in America is the destruction of the economic system. Okay, well, yeah, so that we're applying this right now to what happened prior to 1989, right? Because that's how we're applying this line now. This is Rome we're looking at, not the end of Greece. All right. So, so this has to do with the economic uh, ideas. Now, when you add, like, uh, cast up a mound, together the Hebrew numbers are 13,760. Okay, so so we did have a place for that in our lines. Uh, and I'm trying to remember <laughs> remember it. So I'm going to try to find it. Yes, so that was from, okay. So the only place that I could find that was from November 9th, 1989. No, no, not November 9th. Uh, that was the June 6th, 1987. So that's going to be Ronald Reagan's second meeting with the Pope at the Vatican, right? Because he's going to meet him on June 7th, 1982. And then he's going to meet him again at the Vatican on June 6, 1987. So these are the Vatican meetings. And from that, 13,760 goes to February 6, 2025. So that's going to be 2025. I'm going to be 62. Right? So I'm going to be 61 next year and 62. So so I had that as a number, but there might be some other date that it applies to. Because it's basically 37 years and eight months that that we have that. Now, is there any other place we could put 13,760? Does 13,760 relate to anything having to do with November 9? Well, it's just if we go from November uh, 9, is that's what you're saying, like November... Which November 9th that you want to look at? 2019. Okay, so you want to go back from there? Either one, either back. Well, going forward. into the future is way too far into the future. It wouldn't mean anything, but okay. Um, it would go back to March 8th, 1982. So it doesn't really um, give us anything from that date. Yeah. So now we had some other dates dealing with these these meetings with um, – all of these uh, the meetings with the presidents and the Pope. So I'm just trying to find them all here again. So we have Jimmy Carter meeting with Pope John Paul II uh, at Vatican City on June 21st, 1980. But I, I think it must have something to do with this Soviet-Afghan war, uh, either either that or the, the meetings with the Pope. We have the October 6th date. In 1979, right? That's going to be the first meeting with John Paul. And what was some other date we had? We had the ambassador thing. When was that? When did they first appoint an ambassador? That was like a January 10th date or something? Appointing an ambassador where? Uh, to the Vatican. Or they, they originally recognized the Vatican as like... They, they recognize the Vatican. They set up diplomatic relations with the Vatican. Wasn't that a January 10th date of some sort? I just don't remember what year. Looking. Because that was, you know, so many years after they had, like, um, I was what? Like it was 1867 that they had stopped official diplomatic relations with the papacy and then it's going to be, I think it's 1982, January 10th, if I remember. Uh, 1984. 1984, okay. okay. Yeah, the uh, establishment of diplomatic relations between the U.S. and the Vatican occurred on January 10th of 1984. Okay. Now that's going to bring us to... If we do an inclusive count to September 11th, 2021, which is the third day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar, but um, it's a it's a Sabbath. Does anything happen in 2021 on September 11th that within the movement or anything? 
I mean, it's the 20th anniversary of September 11th. So maybe just that it gives us that symbolic date of September 11th, right? Because we already have from, from verse 16, we have September 11th all the way back to that July 18, 1870 date. So I guess we could just say from January 10th, it's 17,360 inclusive days to September. Okay. Now the octal of that number is 32700. So it has a symbol for March 27th as well. So maybe it's just a symbolic date, but maybe something happens in the movement on that date. I don't know. So 2021, eh? Okay. So, so that's the Sabbath. So on that Sabbath, we should have, um, I was doing presentations uh, every second Sabbath, I think. Right. So I did a presentation September 4th and I did this presentation September 18th. So that would be, um, the Sabbath that we, I didn't do a presentation because we weren't doing morning, morning stuff on at that time in 2021. So it's just in between that. So I don't know what, what would have happened in the movement on September 11th. It's going to be on October 2nd that I have that. Maybe it's going to be September, you know, October 2nd that we have that conflict or whatever you want to call it with the American group. Um, so that's going to be like two weeks, three weeks after that. So I don't know. So it's 21 days before October 2nd. So that's when I have the first public falling out or whatever with the movement that caught me off guard. So I don't know. It, anyway, that's 13,760. It, it may have significance somewhere. That's the casting up of the mount. Now, the, the number itself, of course, I always find it interesting with, when the numbers 13,000, so 1376, is that significant at all as a number, just uh, without the zero? I, I don't see anything about that number. The only thing interesting is the sum of the divisors is 2772. Uh, it's like two, the 7227. It's kind of that reverse thing. Uh, which gives us our July 27th symbol. So I don't know. Okay. I don't want to get bogged down here, but I just think there's something that we probably don't notice. <clears throat> anyway, we've got that casting up of amount. And, and we're going to say that that's the economic and military pressure that's being exerted in that period. Now, when it says they take the most fenced cities, so we're saying that that's the apostate Protestant churches. And in that history, is that the case? Do we see the Protestant churches turning to the papacy in that history in, in ways they hadn't done before under Pope John Paul II? Yes, very much. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to me, it was kind of even remarkable because at, at, at the time, um, you know, when Pope John Paul came, I mean, you know, so that's the, you know, the early 80s. I'm, I, I'm baptized in, in 82, but, um, but I noticed this stuff happening even before I'm baptized. What's, what's happening with this popular Pope? But especially at the time I first become an Adventist, you see all this stuff happening with Pope John Paul II that is, you know, is rather remarkable. Now, I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, with Pope John Paul II, he's going to do a visit to North America or to Canada. He does a 12 day tour across Canada. And that is going to happen in 1984. I'm just trying to see the date. Yeah. So September 16th, 1984. I know, you know, Edmonton's not important, but it is to me. So I'm just going to see what I get with that. So September 16th. 1984, and the count is 13,760. So that brings me to May 20th, 2022. So nothing significant that I see there. He rode his Pope Mobile down 97th Street in Edmonton. So he does this 12 day tour. I don't know when the tour starts and ends and all that stuff, but so what we have anyway in this verse is we have the Protestant church churches turning to the papacy. That's that's what's happening. Hi, Kelly. 
I don't know when you came in the study, but did you notice it was 1260 days from July 18 when Jeff joined the American group yesterday? Maybe you can't speak. It doesn't look like you have your mic on. Anyway, we went through that earlier. You can watch the video later. So anyway, what we have is we have this economic and military pressure, and that's going to take the most fenced cities. Now, we're going to say this most fenced cities are are representing the apostate Protestant churches. And, and what would be the basis for saying that? Why would that? Because these are the cities of munitions. This is going to be, uh, historically, it's going to be Sidon. Uh, the cities of Judea. So this is the the so Judea represents what? What do the most fenced cities represent? Are we trying to look at this in the fenced cities as being the denominations? Okay, yeah. So these are the Protestant denominations, right? That's that's the idea here. This taking of the most fenced cities. That that these are the apostate Protestant churches, but. Why is this have this, 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 um, you know, the cities of munitions are really the, the, the idea is that you have these, these are fortresses, right? So the taking of these fortresses in Judea is symbolic of the, why are they fortresses? So the Protestant churches, because they, they're Protestant, right? They, they've they've been persecuted and attacked by Rome, right? But but now they've they've let down their defenses, or they've they their defenses they've been disarmed because of Pope John Paul II. Now, when that happens, it says then the arms of the South, that is the Egyptian army under Ptolemy V, uh, shall not withstand, right? It's, so this is going to be. The USSR. So we're going to say the arms of the South here. Um, the South, in this case, is the USSR in this history, because the USSR is the South, the King of the South in this history. And so that's going to be, shall not withstand. They're going to lose the Battle of Paneum. That is, we're going to say on November 9th, 1989. So. So we're brought to that history, and we're just specifically, this brings us to that date. Now, his chosen people, that is the elite. So these are the people who uh, are going to be, now we, we would say in the application when we made it as the end of uh, Greece, you know, we would put like the World Economic Forum and stuff in there. But here, these are going to be those this elite, the choicest of the people, or the choicest people are going to be those that are the atheistic communists, right? The globalists, the global elites. How do you spell elites? I think it is. Yeah, there you go. The global elites. Okay, we'll put that in there. Does that make sense? And and so, and it doesn't say um, because they shall not withstand. They're going to lose the battle of Paneum. And then it doesn't say neither is chosen people, but it just says the global elites, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. That is, ultimately, the papacy is going to overcome the king of the south, right? So, you know, I know we have to stand up. We didn't even fill that in when we applied it to Greece, but we're just going to, you know... So these global elites are not going to be able to withstand against the papacy, right, ultimately. And that's what I take these last parts of these verses. They, they, they shall fall, talking about Rome, but also the global elites, they're going to succumb to Rome, right, ultimately. Okay, some interesting things which I'm not going to go through right now, but um, we will look at them later. Okay, so this makes sense, what you see, how we've interpreted, interpreted this verse. Any questions about this? So we have the papacy is standing up. And so this word stand up and withstand, it's the same Hebrew number. And we're going to see that the papacy is going to stand up. 
but these others will not be able to withstand. That is, they're not going to stand, be able to stand up against the papacy. So now we got verse 16. So we're still going to apply this here. Now, here we have this historic application that you see here. This is taken from Swearingen's book, right? So he originally did this where he, he took the verses and then first he goes through and explains, does all the studies just like we do. And then he would put these interpretations. Now, we don't have Atticus epiphanies here, right? In our interpretation of verse 16. So we had gone through this already. So if we go back and we take the verse 16 that we had here, I'm going to borrow this, right? Because I don't like Swearingen's interpretation of verse 16. And, and he's going to have verse 17 as well, but we'll just take, uh, I guess it's going to be all the way here. So this is going to be verse 16. So pagan Rome, they cometh against, he that cometh against him, so do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. Okay, so that's verse 16. So we, we changed, uh, we don't, we don't have Antiochus the Piphases, Piphase, Antiochus Epiphanes in here. So he, pagan Rome, so we're just going to read the historical here. That cometh against him, that is Seleucid Syria, shall do according to his own will. So, so he's come against the king of the south. And he comes against the United States and he does according to his own will. So ignore the stuff in red because we're making a different application here. So we're saying that that's in 191 BC, right? That's the center of the 62 weeks. And that's going to be when Rome conquers Syria. Subject, it, it becomes the king of the north in verse 16. None shall stand before him. He will subjugate Syria and become the next king of the north. Um, so that interpretation, the papacy gets the Sunday lot. We're not going to have that there. But he, pagan Rome under Pompey the Great, right? So this is what happens historically, Pompey, um, shall stand in the glorious land. So that interpretation is going to be the same. But here, this is not going to be the Sunday law the actual Sunday law, this is going to be 9-11. So this is going to be 9-11. Okay, that makes sense. I'm going to have to change this. Even though this has midnight, what, what's the symbol that would be here? Because we already have November 9th, 1989. Would we put December 25th, 1991? Does that make sense to anybody? Because that's when you actually have the fall of the Soviet Union. Well, okay, you'd, you'd have the fall of the Soviet Union, you'd have the 191 BC, and you'd have 191 repeated. Yeah. In 1991. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you, you would have that as well. Okay. So, so I think that's reasonable. Okay. I'm just looking at some numbers here. So. So I think this is, is a reasonable way to look at it, that we might have some witnesses in the numbers to this. Um, so what I did is I counted uh, that 7,522 days, and I counted that from, uh, I'm trying to remember where I counted it from, 7,522, I'm going to minus that. Yeah, December 25th, 1991. So I, I took that date and I counted um, using this Hebrew number, which is he shall do according to his own will. So his own will, 7522. And that brings me to um, this date here, which is July 29th, 2012. Now, I don't know anything significant about July 29, 2012, but the biblical date is the 10th day of the fifth month. So that's the number of the destruction of the temple, right? 70 AD and 586, it's destroyed on the 10th day of the fifth month. So, so that's all I can say about that. I don't know that there's any sp specific event 
on July 29th, 2012. I mean, you could always look it up. Sometimes you'll find there's something significant about an external event that witnesses to our lines. But the point that we have here is that we can already see from this passage, we have an understanding of what happens historically. And and I've been actually studying this history and understanding a little bit better with uh, these, um, you know, the historical thing for Pompey, for instance. Um, now, when when is uh, the years of Pompey? When does when is he? Uh, so we know that he's going to stand in the glorious land, and that's going to be when. That's going to be 63 BC, right? He's going to conquer Jerusalem, right? So there's going to be the siege here in 63 BC here. You can see this here. Now, we still need to apply this as well. So, so you're going to have December 25th, 1991. He will subjugate Syria, become the next king of the north. So, um, and he shall stand in the glorious land. So we're going to say that that's 9-11. So we're not, when it's, he becomes the king of the north, um, obviously that's not the Sunday law itself, right? So what is that when he subjugates Syria? Becomes, so this is going to be the conquering of the U.S. Um, so... So what would we put here? Would we put something dealing with, because this is going to be in the time of of George Bush uh, Sr., not Sr., a junior, right? So George W. Bush, right? He's going to be there at 9-11. But shouldn't we put in something here about the New World Order with George Bush Sr.? Right. In that history. Um, how about I put this, the new world order, just for discussion's sake. Is do we mark this new world order? I didn't put world order in there. Does that make sense? Dwight, are you there? I'm listening. Okay, does that make sense to you that? That this this new world order ish things that happen in that history, that that's a significant part of the papacy subjugating, you know, the United States. I'm, I'm thinking that through. I'm stuck right now on on your um, thoughts about this with Pompey. Okay, yeah, because that's going to be later. So we're going to have this siege. They shall be consumed. So we have uh, the siege in 63 B.C. Yeah. Right. And we're the thing is that we're we're also looking, you know, as as we're going through this, because we've got none shall stand before. Before we get into this to subjugate Syria and become the next king of the north. So I'm I'm just I, I'm considering the history and that part of it to see how that's going to relate to what we're talking about here. Your thought, though, as far as this with Bush Sr. could very well be correct. Yeah, okay. So pagan Rome under Pompey the Great, we're going to say that this is the papacy shall stand in the glorious land. So we're going to say that's 9-11. Now, we have the symbol of the Levites. So the word hand is 3027, that's March 27. And by his hand he shall be consumed. Now, this number, H, uh, uh, H3615, I'm just going to put a footnote here. So this is um, H3615 equals nine years and 327 days. All right. Now, so, it, so it's almost two years. It's going to be um, basically, let me see this here. So it's like 37 and a half days or whatever short of 10 years. So 37 days short of 10 years, 38 days. I'm just trying to think of a period of 10 years that's not quite 10 years. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to leave that line of 
numbers there for now. Okay, so we're going to have this nine years and 327 days, wherever that's going to fit. It does have the symbol of the Levites, right? Now we got 63 BC, the siege. So where do we mark this siege? It's kind of a broad question. That's a hugely broad question. <laughs> Because we've applied it to our lines in different places. So if we look at the, the date, the date that we usually use is the 10th day of the 10th month. And so the 10th day of the 10th month in, in, in our history, um, we have it as, let's see here, just going back. So January 6, 2020 is the 10th day of the 10th month. So other 10th days of the 10th month. I think we had it in 2022 as well. Obviously, December 25th, 2020. It was January 13th in 2022. 2023, it was January. It's also December 24th, 2023. So I'm just I'm just trying to do some math here. But so by his hand he shall be consumed. Now we also, of course, have this number three zero. Uh, <coughs> Seven. Now, maybe if I add these numbers together, the 3615 plus 3027, that's 6,642 days, 18 years, and 67 days. Yeah, 1867, they broke off diplomatic relations with the papacy, which we looked at before. Hmm. Well, some things I'm going to have to think about here a bit. So the, the siege in 63 BC, I mean, we got this message to the Levites. So which by his hand shall be consumed. Now, we could just place this in this beginning history here, but we could just look at this as ultimately, you know, an ultimate sort of end. Yeah, I know there's something we're missing. I think we need to consider a few of these things through the day and come back to it tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we're going to have to, but anyway, we, we, this verse 16. So remember, we started, I know we're, we're going a bit late, but we started late. So, so remember, we take verse 16 and we add up all the Hebrew numbers, right? So we add up all of these numbers and we get 47,000. 903. That's the number of days from this vote for papal infallibility to September 11th, 2001. So we can see that this definitely points to September 11th, 2001, which we already understood. It just, but it's also tying the symbolic date of the papacy, which is a July 18, 1870, a double of the 187. So so that's kind of where we started the study, and that's what we have to really think about here, is that uh, the history of Rome, papal, pagan Rome, represents our history from, you know, basically 19, when Pope John Paul II becomes Pope, exalts himself to establish the vision, all the way up until the Sunday law in our times. Anyway, we'll come back to this tomorrow. And uh, if there's no more comments, I can close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. We ask for a blessing upon all that we do today and help us in our personal study. Thank you for this past year. We just pray for your presence in the year ahead. And um, we know, Lord, that there's many things we still have to learn. And so we submit to you. We trust everything into your care and everyone. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.